20 years ago when you walked through Vienna, you probably saw a lot of bakeries like that on each and every corner around the town. More than 700 bakeries like that served the Vienna citizens with bread and the famous semmel. Now 20 years later, not even a hundred of them are left. And this is not because the Viennese stopped eating bread and, uh, and semmel. But not only the small bakeries disappeared, there were large bread factories like this one, the Ankerbrot factory in the 11th district. At its peak time, they em employed more than 3,000 employees to produce their products. And they also failed. Why? It's not that the products were of poor quality and or, as I said, Viennese stopped eating bread and semmel. It was that the purchasing habits of the Viennese citizen have changed. People didn't want to go uh, to go to the local bakeries anymore uh, to buy bread. They want to go to the convenience store where they bought all the other products for their daily life. And so out of those 700 bakeries, I said less than 100 uh, survived and actually three main bakeries in Vienna supplied the ent entire uh, bread uh, product range. The same thing is currently happening with data centers. There are predictions that in a couple of years, 2020, most of our current corporate data centers will be gone. Currently, there are more than 250 corporate data centers on the European market which are for sale. Uh, data centers that once were the pride of a bank, of an insurance company, uh, of a large enterprise. They do not fit the current requirements of today's IT infrastructure anymore. There is one company in the US uh, called Switch that uh, is currently building its first SuperNAP data center in Reno, the, uh, which is uh, close to Las Vegas in, in the Nevada desert. This single data center will have 100,000 square meters of data center space. It will utilize 150 megawatts of power. Just to give you a comparison, the hydropower plant in Vienna on the Danube River in Freudenau, which is the latest uh, the Austrian uh, Verbund uh, company built, has a max production of 170 megawatt. So basically, this single data center will eat up all the power from that single Danube hydropower plant. Another comparison to that, 150 megawatt is what a city with 800,000 people use in electrical energy. And this SuperNAP that is currently being built will not be the only one on the campus. Switch has planned to develop seven SuperNAPs on that campus. So what is driving that change in terms of IT infrastructure? We at Interaction have three observations. The first one is digital transformation. Digitalization in today's world is the key for a company to survive. It brings, it increases productivity. It enables innovative power Within, or within an organization and it increases the competitiveness of that organization. Accenture, um, consultant uh, company, has um, produced a survey over the last couple of years. They call it the digitalization index, where they investigate how much di digitalization has taken place within an organization. And they found out that especially companies which, or industries which have a large competitive, competitive pressure are pretty far in their digitalization already. So you talk about companies certainly out of the IT industry, communication, electronics, um, but there are companies that are lacking behind in their digitalization, like uh, chemical industry or raw material industry. I attended a conference regarding 
building uh, not too long ago, and there is one Austrian company, POR, which is one of the largest construction companies uh, in Austria with roughly three billion uh, in revenue. And they have for a long time investigated how digitalization can benefit to their very traditional business because the, the construction uh, company, there is not much innovation, you may think, uh, when, when you build uh, uh, buildings because laying bricks on top of each other or putting concrete uh, to each other doesn't allow a, a lot for IT innovation. But they have developed what they call building integrated modeling. This is a cloud-based service they developed on their own to, to speed up not only the design process during a tendering and out of 10 tenders they do as a construction company, they hardly win one opportunity. So cutting the cost during that tendering process is an immense uh, uh, for cutting uh, or for being profitable. But also during the construction process, traditionally a lot of changes apply to a construction project because either um, the owner of that project has uh, last minute changes, or it's being figured out that things don't work with each other as it was initially planned. And this building integrated modeling, also during the construction process, allow in real time to exchange the latest information about uh, the design uh, and uh, the current status of the building with all the companies uh, taking part in that construction. The second observation is the traffic over our networks. Uh, Cisco predicts that in 2020, the, internet, the amount of data that is being transported over our networks is a plentifold of what, what we currently deliver over networks. When you look at the chart, 2015 is only a fraction of what is being expected in 2020. And there are a couple of things that trigger that. And the biggest to it is Internet of Things. Internet of Things will enable basically all technical instruments from your light bulb to your TV to your fridge to connect to the Internet and ch exchange information, provide information to big data applications, and allow companies to do predictive services. And a lot of new services are currently being developed uh, by companies making use of that Internet of Things technology. The third observation is the pure amount of data. Currently, or in 2013, 4.4 zettabytes uh, were being stored in all our IT systems. And, set, and a zettabyte is, if I remember correctly, a 10 with 21 zeros. In 2020, we will store 10 times the amount of data. So the comparison here is, is if a standard coffee mug represents one gigabyte, a setabyte is the entire volume of the Chinese wall. So we need to deploy systems, we need to have data centers that are capable of dealing with that amount of data. Not too long ago, large organizations like Microsoft, like Facebook, like Google, like Oracle, had the idea to serve the entire world out of a couple of data centers, preferably being placed in locations where energy is cheap, where data centers can be run very efficiently due to the climate, um, and have massive scale data center so they have enough compute power in just a few data centers to have all the compute power to serve the entire uh, uh, customer base. But there, were, there is one critical thing they haven't thought of, and that is the limiting factor of the speed of light. That's the maximum speed you can transfer data across networks and actually in today's network data is only uh, being transported with a fraction of the speed of light. But you can increase bandwidth 
but you cannot increase uh, the, the speed data is being transported. And that for a lot of, uh, lot of application and workloads has a limiting factor which is called latency. A latency is the time between data is leaving the, the data center uh, being received at the user uh, and, and more or less the response time of any application. And so companies realized that they need to be closer with their application and their workloads to where the application is actually being used. So currently we talk about um, mainly three classes of data center. And please use this uh, these map just for reference. It's not a real layout where, where data centers like that are being located. So as I said, companies like Google, Microsoft, and Facebook had deployed large-scale data centers across Europe. Those data centers utilize uh, electrical capacity above 50 megawatts of power. And uh, as I said earlier, placed either where uh, energy is cheap, where they can run efficiently because of the, the outside climate, like in Norway or Finland, uh, where cooling is not that, that uh, much of an issue. But that did not satisfy the, 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 the latency and response time demand of their application. So they started to deploy data centers which are closer to the commercial hubs in Europe. Uh, Frankfurt, Paris, London, you name it. But even then, with data centers above 20 megawatts of capacity, for cer certain application, that was still too slow uh, to address. Uh, for example, uh, banking applications, where it really matters how fast the transaction is being transported. So companies started, and Interaction is one of them, 20 years ago already, to build large-scale data centers, which are really close to the eyeballs of this world, close to the users, to minimize the transport time between the data center and where the data is actually being consumed. One of them is Interactions Cloud and Carrier Hub in Vienna. This campus of data center currently offers a capacity of 24 megawatt uh, in Vienna. But why is co-location one way of solving the problems? You first have scalability. Enterprises, system uh, service providers, managed service providers can scale the amount of data center capacity according to their current needs. They don't need to predict how much capacity will be used in five years and invest heavily in the data center infrastructure that may never be used or will be heavily underestimated. You, you can achieve higher power density you can improve energy efficiency because certainly on a large scale there is economy of scale that applies to those kind of data centers. You have advanced business continuity because all of these co-location sites, not just ours, is being maintained and staffed 24 by 7, something that you hardly can achieve in, in a corporate data center. And you certainly have the guarantees for security, but also compliance to meet all the regulatory requirements to run your IT workloads. But there are two elements that are critical to modern data centers. The first one, does your data center offer you hybrid IT options, which mean, does it allow tr to transform your IT organization in utilizing legacy applications that you still require to run because you spend thousands of man hours developing these applications, uh, does it allow you to connect to the important networks of the world, not only to physical networks, but also to social networks like Facebook and others? And does it give you the option to connect to the cloud service provider that are required for your future applications. A lot of companies undergoing the struggle right now and wondering how they can deploy cloud into their own infrastructure. And there are many ways to do that. 
there are three basic or fundamental models of cloud services. The first one is infrastructure as a service, uh, something where you rent or purchase CPU cores, uh, memory, uh, storage from a service provider like AWS, for example, but there are many uh, local service providers that offer um, infrastructure as a service models. The second one is the platform as a service where you don't need to worry about the, the CPUs and, and the operating system anymore. That is presented already from the cloud service provider and one of the well-known examples is Microsoft Azure. And the third way of using cloud services is the software as a service model. Uh, companies like Salesforce offering CRM uh, applications and the thousands on the market uh, that uh, provide similar kind of service. There's different levels, as I said, how much of your responsibility you give to a cloud service provider. Uh, the the tra traditional IT had to deal with all layers of running an IT workload starting from networking over storage to operation system data and certainly uh, the application on top. With infrastructure as a service, you are rely on somebody that professionally provides everything up to the virtualization layer and you deploy your operation system that you want to run your data and application on. Then there is platform as a service where, where you only need to care about your data and your application. And the last one, as I mentioned, is software as a service, where you use commodity software off a shelf and deploy it into your IT infrastructure. Uh, and you don't need to worry about all those kind of things anymore. So there are a couple of examples, and I don't want to go into any detail of that because you know all these companies that um, I have on, on that slide. So Amazon, for example, as the infrastructure as a service, Microsoft Azure as the platform as a service, and Salesforce or Office 365 as a software as a service. But still companies are cautious using cloud services. And um, IDG did a survey not too long ago why IT managers refuse to implement cloud uh, services in their own infrastructure. And the main reason is because of security concerns. Almost 70% of the IT managers ask, say, we not implement cloud services yet because there are issues with security or we fear issues with security. 42% of the responses said we don't implement because of the costs. And 37% responded that we doubt that it will give us the performance that we require to run our applications. If those barriers were diminished, the adoption of cloud and workloads in the cloud will increase dramatically. So one of the options to target uh, those, uh, those factors is using cloud, connect, cloud out of your own network, basically. So instead of using internet as the connecting method from your own premises to the cloud service provider, you use a dedicated connection, an in interaction calls this service uh, Cloud Connect, uh, to directly connect with cloud service providers. And there are examples of other providers that do the same things. You can improve network uh, performance, you can guarantee high availability, you can get guarantee security, and that's what's needed to adopt cloud in a larger scale. So the hybrid IT model still use, utilizes the corporate network and to some extent the corporate data centers for legacy applications. But with extending your corporate network into a co-location provider, it opens you the door to not only use the communities of networks, internet exchanges, and, and other providers in that co-location data center, but also access cloud services with uh, low latency, extremely low latency, 
uh, smaller than two milliseconds in that example. And this will basically open doors uh, for cloud being adopted in all those different areas, uh, mm -hmm. development and test, productivity, uh, big data applications, and you name it. Gartner says by 2020, it will be rare as a company now not having an internet uh, policy for a company not having a, a cloud uh, policy. So hybrid cloud services or hybrid cloud IT will be the most common way to run workloads. So the next time you, you're in Vienna and bite into a SEMO, uh, think about if your IT infrastructure is ready for adopting uh, those uh, digitalization. And if your uh, infrastructure that you run and operate will meet the requirements of the future. Thank you. <laughs>